Okay. Uh, uh, good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Attorney David DeLuca with the uh, Town Council's office. Pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, uh, what uh, you have is a, uh, an open meeting on a complaint that was filed uh, on uh, April the 5th, 2023, complaining that the, this committee acted uh, without a quorum uh, back in October of 2022. Uh, there was a meeting held at that date and time, October the 19th, uh, where um, there was a, a, a lack uh, of a quorum present at the time. Uh, I think there were, uh, there was only a, a chairman present, as well as one member uh, of uh, the committee that was uh, remote at the time, and then there were two ex officio members who were present. Uh, and a number of uh, uh, motions and, and votes were made in anticipation of uh, the uh, uh, town meeting that had been planned for just a couple of weeks away. So there was the legal necessity to act at that particular point in time, but not the, the number of members present. Uh, and uh, there, there was a discussion of the uh, uh, what we call the rule of necessity when there is a, a lack of a quorum present, or more particularly, when there's conflicts that results in a lack of a quorum. Uh, it uh, uh, sometimes is necessary uh, to act even in the absence of a quorum, and that's what happened. So uh, uh, the complaint was made, uh, and the first problem we found with the complaint was really, frankly, one of timing. Uh, the, the open meeting law requires that uh, complaints be made within 30 days uh, of the alleged uh, in this case, it was several months later. Uh, if the meeting was in October, complaint being made in, in, in April, it was obviously more than 30 days late. So in my proposed response with the copy of which you have here, um, that's really the, the first defense, if you will, uh, that I provided on behalf of the town. And then second, I, had, I, I went into a discussion of the, uh, the rule of necessity and how it was that that was uh, put forward uh, in this case. Uh, this is, uh, again, required that uh, the board hear the complaint, uh, uh, consider the complaint that's being made, and, and also uh, to authorize town council, my office, to respond on your behalf, uh, if that's uh, the board's pleasure. So uh, that's why I'm here uh, to answer any questions you might have about the complaint and the proposed response. I have questions, Jim. Yes, please. Um, I watched the meeting, and at no point in the meeting was there a discussion about rule of necessity. When did that discussion take place? Uh, I, I'm not sure if it happened uh, either before the meeting, or uh, I know that uh, I provided some verbal or oral advice to uh, the town administrator sometime prior to the meeting. Do we have the minutes of that meeting that specify uh, that? Uh, the rule was invoked. Well, no, I don't. I don't have the uh, the minutes of that meeting, but um, I do have a memory of uh, having provided some advice on the rule of necessity and how it works. Um, so, for clarity, that was a formal conversation. Formal where? It happened before the meeting. Took Correct. Place? That's the only way the meeting could take place is with that guidance. Master and alarm just uses that. It specifies that. Um, Rule of is there a way to improve speaking closer to a mic? Because it's very difficult to hear. Susan, there are no mics available. Um, I can point the computer towards the speaker and let's see what happens. It's the computer. So, Master Norlock says that the rule of necessity can only be invoked when they're legally required to act on the matter and it lacks enough members to take valid action solely because members are disqualified by the contract conflict of interest law from participating in the matter. It also says, um, it has to be discussed in the meeting or noted in the meeting minutes as to why the rule of necessity was invoked. Um, 
and I'm not finding you yourself just said that none of that happened. Right, right. right. So we, in my mind, we are in violation of an open meeting law. Granted, she's outside of that 30-day time frame, but it was still violated. Well, I, look, uh, I, I don't want to argue with you about your determination on this. I did find some guidance that said that, that, that notwithstanding the, the, the condition, and I'm not going to dispute with you, there is a very uh, clear condition that the, 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 the rule may be invoked when it's disqualification. Is someone speaking? <laughs> Okay, David, can you yeah, speak up something? Right, right, sure. The, 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 uh, as a precondition, uh, that uh, uh, when there's a lack of quorum, the precondition based on disqualification due to a conflict of interest. I did find some, uh, some contrary advice uh, uh, on this point that it may also be applied when there is a, a lack of uh, quorum of, it, of available voters. So I, well, I agree that that's the, the, the standard. I did find uh, some guidance on, on this that, that made it at least ambiguous. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've taken a position um, that uh, it, it's still nonetheless, uh, well, I agree, best practice that, you know, if, if we're gonna invoke the rule of necessity, yeah, it needs to be on the record. And, and usually it's a, applied when there's a disqualification. Uh, but uh, I, I think it, in this case, there was uh, the overwhelming legal need to take action at that time. There is no possibility that you could have called an emergency meeting for the following day when everybody I, could have been again, available? I, that's not my call. Uh, well, no, you, I'm call. just, I was not on the board then, so I can't, but I'm just going by what, it's on the state website under conflict of interest and rule of necessity. Yeah, because I think from my perspective, looking back on that, I was not able to attend that October 19th meeting, but you know, pulling that special town meeting warrant, that we had another almost 30 days to, to meet again, right? I know the warrant closed, and so that was my, I was having a hard time understanding why we couldn't meet later on, um, even the next day or the following week. Um, and plus, these, these seemed like they were more of, just moving money around more than necessary, you know. Well, it, the, 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 again, from my perspective, or at least as I understand the case, um, there was uh, the need to act at that particular night because the town meeting that was going to be happening a month later, mm -hmm. uh, the warrant was, was being prepared and distributed the next week. Okay. So that's why. So the time it came down to timing. It was a timing thing. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure what we can necessarily do in this situation. Um, I, mean, I think it's you know a lesson learned and getting guidance from the from the council and you know I'll defer to guidance from the council. I mean the other thing too is that we do have an open seat. Uh, for a citizen at large on this board and it's imperative that we fill that position because again I think we were maybe put up against the gun for the fact that we didn't have a full board so it's just getting it out there to everybody knowing that this is on HKIM as well that we do have an open position for a citizen at large that would be critical to filling that you know in future years going forward so we do not have the same situation. So with that, I'm uh, looking for uh, the board to give me a vote on, on whether or not that I should respond uh, in accordance with the draft that I have uh, provided. Okay. So given that the complaint was beyond the time frame, we, we still need to res we, sh we still need to respond. Yes. Okay. Right. Is the complaint? Why that's an impact, or was it just straight there was no quorum? My understanding of the complaint is that it was uh, uh, a complaint. 
complaint. Like, did the did the complaint say something was voted on and it should have been voted on with a quorum and here's the adverse impact of not having the quorum or was it just there was no quorum and so the meeting shouldn't have been held? Yeah, it's the, the, the latter, that there was a lack of quorum and that the meeting should not be held. There was there was no allegation uh, that uh, there Does was the adverse action. Correct. I'm sorry, I can't hear. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm close to the mic. Can you hear me now? I can. Yeah, yeah. Very clearly. Yeah. So the um, um, I, I said that uh, your statement, uh, the latter, is correct. That uh, the complaint is simply that the lack of quorum, and that as a result of that, uh, that the action taken, uh, uh, you know, should not be legally recognized. There was no allegation that uh, any of the action taken was uh, either uh, adverse uh, in any way to the town. Thank you. Okay. Do I have a, a motion that can be made for the... To accept the response from, um, from town council? Susan, I just made a motion to accept the response from town council. Can you hear me? Oh, you're muted, Susan. Very little. Okay, let's try this again. Nancy, speak up. So I made a motion to accept the response from the town council to the complaint. Second. All those in favor? So we've got uh, two. two. I'll, I'll be third. So uh, right now we've got three and out of your... Oh, no. No, okay. So it's three uh, versus one. Three, one. Two different. 